Welcome back everyone, Herson here with another guide for Civilization VI multiplayer with the Better Balance Game Mod. Today, we'll be covering how to actually win a culture victory. We'll be drawing from a game I played as from Vemba Zynga. This guide will primarily be focused on the late game, but we'll start by briefly touching upon the ways we set ourselves up for success in the early and mid game. We start with a fairly good spawn and go for a typical opening with commercial hubs in all of our early cities, running internal trade routes to the city with the Governor Magnus for extra yields. Fast forward a bit to turn 38 and we start constructing our first wonder, the Oracle. The Oracle is a phenomenal wonder for culture victory, as it grants a great deal of extra great person points. We pair this wonder with the Governor Pingala, using his promotion which doubles all great person points generated in his city. Because our capital is already dedicated to running the Governor Magnus for the purpose of boosting our trade route yields, this means the Oracle has to go in our second city to make the most use out of it. After finishing the Oracle, we immediately construct a theater square in the city to start generating Great Writer points. All of this synergizes with the 50% extra Great Writer, Artist, and Musician points Congo gains from their Civ bonus. All said and done, a city with Pingala's Great Person promotion, the Oracle, a theater square, and an amphitheater. Boosted by Congo's bonus grants 12 Great Rider points per turn passively. Aside from the Oracle, we make use of Congo's 50% extra Great Merchant points alongside the Pantheon God of War and Plunder, which grants one Great Merchant point from every commercial hub in your empire, to snipe all of the best Great Merchants without ever needing to run a project for them. This ultimately culminates in us getting a Great Merchant that grants us three Envoys in a target city-state, which we use to steal the Suzerain bonus of Ayutthaya. This city-state is one of the best in the game, giving us a substantial amount of culture over the course of the game just by playing normally. We make sure that we keep up in science, placing a campus in most of our cities by the time they reach 7 population and have their third district slot unlocked. In multiplayer games, we can't neglect science when pursuing culture victory, otherwise we'd just be an easy target for a military superpower to push around. We try to build the wonder Oxford University, one of the best wonders in the game for science victory, in order to deny it from the rest of the lobby and make our job easier. However, Persia is able to recruit a great engineer that grants production towards wonders, which lets them complete it before us. Despite being our ally, from here on out, Persia is the number one threat to our culture victory. We continue building out our infrastructure in a typical way, tagging our cities with factories and zoos and aquariums and so on and so forth while rushing to unlock research labs. If you want a more detailed look at how to play the game through to this stage, be sure to check out my video, How Multiplayer Civ 6 Pros Dominate the Late Game. While we path towards chemistry in the tech tree to unlock research labs, we also pre-build a large military consisting of heavy cavalry, light cavalry, and siege units. We place down a ton of encampments and build a fair number of military academies while we're at it. In addition to military academies allowing us to train corps and armies directly at a discount, in the Better Balanced Game mod they also grant us two oil per turn each. This is critical to ensuring we have enough oil to support our military in the next stage of the game. After we get our research labs, we rush for combustion and upgrade our military to tanks and artillery. We had built a railroad all the way through the land of our ally, Korea, towards China so that we can reinforce our attack on them more easily. China was chosen as our target for three reasons. 1. They have a fair number of wonders and great works, which is helpful for our culture victory. 2. They are weak enough that there's little risk of us facing serious resistance. And 3. They're an unexpected target. Most players would attack Nubia or France, both of whom are much closer to us. However, this also means those players anticipate an attack when they see our military score go up, and consequently have bigger militaries prepared to defend themselves. Our push is also timed with unlocking the government of fascism, which grants 50% extra production towards all units, as well as 5 additional combat strength in all combat. Even though China quickly has steel walls and tanks of their own, they're not able to compete with the extra strength this government affords us. When killing them, we don't simply try to take their cities as quickly as possible. Instead, we put in the policy card for 50% extra yields on pillaging, and pillage as many tiles as possible from them. Pillaging industrial zones and campuses yields science, which is integral to keeping pace with the rest of the lobby and techs. Pillaging mines, aqueducts, and commercial hubs yields gold, which is obviously helpful for any victory condition. Lastly, quarries, plantations, and pastures are the real treasures we're looking to pillage. These yield faith. 
Faith is a critical resource for culture victory, as it's necessary to buy rock bands. Because our natural faith generation is so low, we are extra thorough in pillaging as much faith as we can from Chinese cities before we finish them off. On turn 92, our alliance with Persia expires. As we'd already swapped out of fascism and into democracy with the fascist legacy policy card, our trade routes have been feeding him an immense amount of extra food and production. Not wanting to lose these yields and not sufficiently recognizing the threat we pose to his science victory, he renews our alliance, creating a 20 turn window where he can't possibly declare war on us by any means. This ends up ultimately being his downfall. Now, we fully commit to trying to win culture victory in earnest. We grab the capitalism civic to unlock shopping malls, which are heavily buffed by the Better Balanced Game mod to provide a substantial 20 tourism each. We take advantage of the cheaper, more powerful neighborhoods we have access to on account of playing the Congolese civilization, and build shopping malls in as many cities as possible. In cities with low production, we simply buy these shopping malls using the gold we get from pillage in China. We rush for the computers technology and the environmentalism civic, both of which grant plus 50% tourism to our entire empire each. Grabbing these two will double our tourism, so it's critical that we rush for both of them right away. While doing this, we put down a theater square in nearly every city and start running theater square projects, which grant an instant burst of great writer, artist, and musician points when completed. These great person points are multiplied by our Congo bonus towards great person generation, making this especially efficient. We ensure the governor Moksha is in our capital city, with his final promotion unlocked to double the tourism yield of great works in a city. As Congo, our palace has room for five great works, and we have four more great work slots afforded to us by the Natural History Museum that we built in our government plaza. This means that this city can store an enormous amount of great works of music, making it the perfect place to use this governor's promotion for double tourism. The faith we pillaged off China is being put to work buying rock bands to send into Persia's territory. Here, being allied to Persia works out in our favor. To understand why, let me explain exactly how culture victory works for a moment. Culture victory is achieved by earning more foreign tourists in our civilization than any other civ has domestic tourists in their own. Civs earn a domestic tourist every time they generate 100 culture, so in order to block our culture victory, Persia has been maximizing their own culture to boost their domestic tourist production. This results in him being the biggest barrier to our culture win. Every time we exert enough tourism on another civ, we convert one of their domestic tourists into a foreign tourist of our own. Every turn, we exert the tourism number we have at the top of the screen on every civ in the game, multiplied by any modifiers we have towards them, such as sending a trade route to them and having open borders with them. The amount of tourism we need to exert on a civ to convert one tourist from them is equal to 200 times the number of civs at the start of the game. Because this was initially a 12-player lobby, this means we need to exert 2400 tourism on a civ to get one foreign tourist. Whenever we gain a foreign tourist from a civ, we're actually decreasing their domestic tourists by one. As our goal is to have more foreign tourists in our land than any other player has domestic tourists, exerting tourism on Persia, who leads the world in domestic tourists, is actually dragging the goal closer to us every time we do it. Therefore, running our rock bands through Persia's land yields twice the value that we get out of running them through any other player's land. However, Persia knows this as well, and as soon as he can, he puts in the music band policy card to prevent us from moving any rock bands through his territory. As a result, we start sending our rock bands to Korea instead, since we've conveniently already built a railroad through their land to speed up the whole process. During all of this, we run industrial zone projects in several of our cities to generate Grand Engineer points so we can grab this guy, who allows us to spend gold to instantly complete a wonder. We use this to finish the Biosphere, which effectively grants us 6 tourism per renewable resource energy tile improvement we build. This tourism is then doubled from the multipliers unlocked at the Computers Tech and the Environmentalism Civic, so it's actually granting us 12 tourism per tile improvement. We put in the policy card for extra build charges on new builders and get to work coating the entirety of our land with wind farms and solar panels. This is another way in which keeping pace in science really pays off for culture victory. These tile improvements are both unlocked in the information era of the tech tree, so this strategy requires having very good science to pull off. Once we run out of room for these tile improvements, we start removing mines and farms to make more. 
Throughout this stage of the game, we're spending all of our gold on a mixture of shopping malls and builders. Having good APM is critical, as the turn timer is really tight at this stage of the game. We're continuing to use our military to pillage more faith for more rock bands, and we're still micromanaging all of our rock bands and dozens of builders every turn. It's a lot to keep up with, and takes a lot of practice to do quickly enough to avoid having the turn timer run out on us. Competitive Civ 6 is fairly unique in its ability to test the player's endurance. We're 5 hours deep into a single game, and we're still expected to be extremely quick if we want to actually finish our turns. Once we're done pillaging and conquering most of China, we make peace with them while they have one city remaining. In free-for-all games in CPL, players are allowed to leave once they've lost two-thirds of their cities, so at this late stage of the game, China is now controlled by an AI. We want to leave them alive with one city left because, if they were to fully die, all foreign tourists they've contributed towards our culture victory would be instantly deleted. Finally, on turn 112 with 4,860 tourism per turn, we finally managed to clinch culture victory while Persia is still in the middle of launching its exoplanet expedition. With one turn left in our alliance, there's an army of Persian giant death robots staring us down on our border who look none too happy about the situation. Thanks for watching to the end of the video. If you like this content, be sure to let me know what you want to see next in the comments down below. I'll be uploading the full VOD of this game to this channel shortly if you want to see more, so stay tuned for that. This game was actually streamed live on my Twitch account, which you can find a link to in the description of this video. If you want to see more guides for Multiplayer Civilization VI with a better balanced game mod, be sure to check out the playlist on my channel. And as always, thanks for watching.